Hey guys, how's it going? It's Talomic here with DMB Academy, and today I want to take a look at creating effects from scratch. So, one of the things that I often find when I'm working on tunes is that it gets to the last, like, you know, 10% or whatever, and you need to add all your impacts, your risers, um, any transitional effects, and any kind of like ear candy on your tune. Um, and two things one, I hate doing it, it takes ages, it's kind of boring. Uh, and the second one is that searching splice for these sounds can be really frustrating. Splice, loop, cut, whatever you're using can be a bit annoying. So we're going to look at creating some completely from scratch using Serum. The other advantage of this is that you're not using the same like impact that 30 other people have used. So we'll start with an impact. Um, we'll do like almost like a reverbed kick sound. So the first thing we need to do is generate the kick. So I'm going to create a sine wave. Turn the phase, the random on the phase down, and I'm actually going to turn pitch tracking off for oscillator A. What this means is that regardless of which note I put on the keyboard, it makes no difference to the pitch at all. Um, it means that it will be consistent whenever we're playing, whatever key we press will be the same here every time. So I just need to find a good kind of starting pitch for our kick and we'll create uh, decay. So the way that kicks are synthesized is that you have your basic, usually sine wave, maybe a triangle, but usually a fairly like raw uh, wavetable and then the pitch decays. So you get that click, that sharp attack, the higher pitch at the start and then it goes down to the subbier tail of the kick at the end. So we can recreate that. We've got something like this, we turn the envelope on and we'll drag that to the course pitch here. And you can kind of hear a kick, obviously it needs a lot of refining. Let's also maybe bring that down a bit. There we go. So we've got something that's a little bit kickier. Obviously, as you do this yourself as well, you can refine it and, and work on the finer details a bit more. Let's add some effects. Just a little bit of drive and some compression. And let's add some noise. Let's go analog and bright white. Cool. And then let's add some reverb. Take some of the real low stuff out with the low cut and turn the mix up. Maybe put the compressor after. One of the things that really annoys me, total side note, the threshold on the compressor on Serum is like backwards. So you turn it up and the threshold goes down. You turn it down until shock goes up. Minor grievance. Cool, and then we'll add a little filter. And there you go. Nice. Obviously, as I said, you can tweak it. Main elements is we've got that punchy low kick and then we've got that noise on the top. You can try different noise sounds as well. Like that actually sounds quite nice. Um, you can also try different oscillators. So. suggest something that's not got as many harmonics but there's a few different fairly basic ones in here like for example so plenty to mess around with let's move over to the next one 
Okay, so the next sound we're going to look at is a classic old school dub siren sound. So what we're going to need is a couple of oscillators. We're going to need one that's got quite a nice top end. I find Scream works quite well for this. I mean, you can sound here it always sounds like a kind of phone. Kind of tone anyway. So we'll find a sweet spot around there and we'll just add a little bit of detune there we go and we'll bump that two octaves the pitch won't matter too much as we're going to be doing a lot of pitch modulation stuff anyway but we need to set ourselves up right and then we're going to need something that's got a slightly softer low end so maybe if we've got Like that and a bit more unison on that as well so where a lot of the magic for this sound comes from is in the pitch modulation as i said so we're going to create a square wave it's going to bump these up a little bit so it's only doing half of the half of that and then we will put it on the master tuning so lfo one there global master tuning and what this will do is affect the entire pitch of everything. So we'll set this to trigger and we'll adjust the So you can see where that tone is coming from now. So we'll just add a filter, we'll add a bandpass filter. We'll, if I press Option or Alt and Shift. So let's move on to our effects. I want to give it quite a lot of drive uh, distortion, so I'm going to use diode 2. And crank that all the way up. Add a little bit of delay. And I'll filter that down. And then we'll add some multiband compression. And we'll then tweak this, so this low end less highs and a bit more mid. Nice, and then a bit of reverb. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. We can tweak some of the low end out of that. We could add an EQ to just high pass out some of those lows as well. And we could add a tail Or even a bit of release. But that's pretty much it. Um, as I said, endless tweakability with this kind of thing. Uh, obviously, you're trying to make it so that it's an effect that only you have, even if it's subtly different from other people's. Um, but for the sake of time, we'll move on to the next one. So, the next one's probably one of the easiest. Um, we're just going to create a riser. And so I'm going to mute these oscillators for now. We'll come back to them. Um, but let's start with bright white noise and make the simplest riser that we can. And then we'll make it more interesting from there. So we're going to turn the filter on. Turn our noise up. Bit of resonance. And we can actually just set an LFO. So say we want it to happen over two bars, set it to an envelope, and then bit of drive. Boom. Okay. Basic riser done. Now it becomes a case of like, how do we make this more interesting? Um, one of the things that I quite like to do is to introduce... Some oscillators but to make it so that 
it's more about adding a texture rather than adding anything tonal. So if we go into global uh, and we can use our chaos oscillators here. So I'll click on mono, we'll go chaos one, oscillator A, volume. And And if we turn off our noise, you can hear that it's kind of randomly jumping around. Let's actually adjust that, so I'll just make it positive. So that's kind of cool in itself, but let's also do Chaos 2, oscillator A, course pitch. Do the same here, mono, sample and hold, and then and we've now got this kind of like random noisy texture over the top and we can even set if we set LFO 1 to the amount for the volume and for the pitch so it increases over time. Turn it down a little bit on there. Let's actually get a slight. Let's try it with a sine wave instead. There we go. So we've now got like a more computer sounding noise that Sawtooth sort was slightly too um I had too many harmonics it was sounding a bit weird okay and then let's add some effects so we'll go with some distortion first a bit of down sampling and we can even increase let's maybe make it a bit longer Um, reverb. And let's turn that back up again. Let's add a bit of delay. Put a dimension expander. Let's tweak this slightly. To add that little tail at the end and we'll add a filter. And a bit of drive. There we go. So you can see how this is endlessly tweakable. We could add some multiband compression to it. We could tweak this oscillator. We could add some randomness to this one. I've done it the other way around before where you have the sine wave pitch up as the riser and then you use the noise as like the static on top uh, with a bit of randomness to it. There's actually a lot that can be done with the chaos oscillators um, in Serum that I don't see many people using. But yeah, there you go. Three simple effects, all created from scratch, all just using Serum. Hopefully that helped. Any questions, let us know, and I'll see you in the next one.